Amen. So it takes five seconds to say that. Five seconds. Shut up and get out to these doubtful words or these words that condemn you. So many people commit suicide because of words that condemn. You'll never make it. Your mama told you you were dumb when you were young. You're, you're stupid. You'll never make it. You'll never be part of my inheritance for the rich folks that, that get inheritance, that have a silver spoon. <laughs> you know, that's this, we have to learn, learn the word of God. And so we have to hear it clearly. We have to hear it clearly. And that way, when you tell them to shut up and get out, get out, you say, no, I am the righteousness of Christ Jesus. When I made Jesus the Lord of my life, I am headed somewhere. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. So lately, I have been working on weeds uh, since, um, uh, excuse me, since um, having had the diagnosis of cancer that I'm healed of, I'm a little wiser. Okay, I'm a lot of wiser, a lot wiser. And what I eat, and how I take care of myself, and number one, sugar, 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 grows tumors, grows cancers at an amazing rate. Cut down on the sugar, or eliminate it, one or the other. You know, things like that, environmentally. You know, my cancer was environmentally, it wasn't inherited, it was environmentally. Back in, in the 60s growing up, we used a lot of plastic, and we used a lot of aluminum. And now this popular thing about rolling aluminum balls and put them in the dryer, don't do that. It breaks your immune system. It might unwrinkle your clothes, but it sure breaks your immune system. You know, the fabric softeners, things like that that are not good for you. They're carcinogens. Things we put on our face, things we wash our hair. And we're not in bondage, we're just wiser. Some of the best shampoos are the natural ones anyway. <laughs> so I, I do not like, you heard the commercials about Roundup. I, don't not, I, I never have liked fertilizer in the beginning anyway, even before the cancer scare. It was stinky. It was not good for the dogs. The dogs step on it, they bring that smell inside, you know, the fertilizer or um, the weed killer in it. Weed killer. And so what I do is, what I've been doing is I, I pull up the weeds by my fingers, one at a time. And I love it. It's so therapeutic. And so all the neighbors are put, ha, putting a, a fertilizers, but I'm pulling them up one at a time. And the rains come, and guess what happens? Little babies of those weeds come up. And it's like, God, I just had all this area, and now there's... And so I go and do it again before the babies grow up, and it becomes uh, uncontrollable. So it's tedious, but we have to always work on our ground and how the word of God is on our ground. You can pull up some weeds. I'm not going to think that. I got a victory, yeah. But then the little baby seeds are still in there. You know, the little baby seeds are there, and you have to pull those up until they're completely gone. And then once in a, once in a while, maybe 10 years from now, the devil will say, well, you feel this because of that. You know, continue pulling those weeds out. You know, just... Just tell it to shut up and get out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so easy. The word of God is so easy. I believe I receive it. Shut up and get out. So easy, right? Because the word of God will not come back void. It's not void of power. So uh, um, I, t I speak to my grass. I say, oh, no, you're not welcomed here. This is my grass and the anointed lives here. You're not welcome here. You either dry up or I'm pulling you out. And, you know, amen? It sounds elementary, but it works. My, my, my grass has a little less weeds than other people's grass for sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So pull the weeds. Get rid of complaining. Pull the weeds of complaining out. Pull the weeds of worrying out. Pull the weeds of anger out. Pull the weeds out that have, your, have affected your peace. Have you ever tossed a turn in the middle of the night? Besides coffee. <laughs> you know, the worry is terrible. Drug companies are being rich because people can't sleep because of worry. Why make a company rich? Why are there pharmaceuticals uh, uh, employees and all that living in rich billion-dollar mansions just because you can't sleep, because you can't get out of worry? Think about it. Is it true? It's true. So we got to pull out the weeds. 
those words, you know, uh, of, of life in your heart. But you have to do an examination of what it is that you need to be studying to get you to a place where you're not lacking in your faith. For you, it could be something. For you, it could be something else. For you, it could be this. It could be something else. But the Word of God is all the same power. Amen? We have to be careful of contamination. It matters who you hang out with. Carnal friends will seep out their carnality or their loose morals on you. You say, but they're, they're my good buddy. I've known them forever. So, do they have the same faith level that you have? No, probably not. I lost a bajillion friends because I knew that, that I'm on a different realm than they are. There's people in a, in a business realm. There's people in party realms. There's people in bum realms. <laughs> but I'm in the Holy Ghost realm, the spirit realm. See, you're different. Right. You're valuable. You are bought with a price. Amen. You're expensive. There can be no dollar amount that you could pay for the salvation that Jesus did on the cross for you. You are special. You're priceless. You're a gem. You're more precious than gold. You are more beautiful than a diamond. You are more you are greater than all the jewels in the Queen of England's cabinet. You are special to God. And he doesn't want to share you with anyone because he's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. He's jealous. So carnal friends will put their loose morals on you. And before you know it, you're going with the flow. Don't go with the flow. Go against the flow. Because your flow is a flow of faith. Amen? So don't contaminate your faith. Same thing with listening to other ministry or well-meaning people's Christianity. <clears throat> if they're not under the word of faith, they're not in this church, that you know that it's a, a different kind of Christianity. You'll know by the Spirit. But then all of a sudden you'll start questioning. Hmm. They believe this. They don't believe in tithing. They believe in drinking. Hmm. You know, they... Go out on Saturday night and they're in church on Sunday morning. Hmm. Talk about weeds. You know, that's, that's leaven. Hallelujah. So if they're not of your household of faith or like-minded in what you believe, you're contaminating your faith simply by, you know, hanging out with them. You can say, hello, I love you. Okay, got to go now. Bye. Make excuses. We are masters of excuses, aren't we? Starting in school. I'm late because of... But you'll never tell the teacher, I, I stayed up late last night. <laughs> and can I have a pass? You know, whatever. So don't even listen to, listen in a conversation. Quickly exit. If there's conversations that are uh, very suggestive, don't laugh at them. <laughs> Quickly exit. You know, don't let anybody cuss around you. Don't let anybody enter your house cussing in a CD, DVD, or something on TV. They're coming in your house and they're bringing that atmosphere. And then you're wondering, why, what's lacking in my faith? Why is my faith lacking? You know, what, what's going on? I just, I'm praying, but I just can't make a breakthrough. I'm praying, I just, I, I just, I can't break through. What is it, God? What is it, God? And he will show you because he wants you to know he's a good God. He's so, he is so gracious and he is so merciful. But, if, but he also knows if you do things on purpose one day and say, well, I'll repent for it at church when I go. I was brought up under Catholicism. I know what that's all about. I know all the party people, the, the people that busted people's heads over with the beer bottles and brawls and, uh, you know, a lot of ugly stuff. And you see them all, I don't know how to say it in English, uh, crudo, <laughs> In, in church Sunday morning uh, with hangover. They're in, the, they're in church Sunday morning with a hangover. And then they... Sounds funny, but it's true. It's true. Our whole community and neighborhood is like that. Until they quit coming to church and they come on Christmas and Easter. 
So I know what I'm talking about. I know what the world is out there, and it's worse now, nowadays, than it was in my day. It's worse. Same demons, same devil, but more legions of them. See, they come in ranks. The enemy comes in ranks, and they have a commander. I know I've seen them. Just like these chairs are lined up, you know, there's that row, that row, that row. That's the way the, the little devil's assignments are, and they have one command, commander. You go and keep everyone from coming to church on Sunday and Wednesday. You go and put sleep on that person. You go and put influenza on this person. And you try to start a fight between the husband and wife. They have their assignments. They have their assignments. That's what, that's what they do. They try to do everything they can to steal the word from us and steal faith from us so that we can't get blessed and we can't excel in life and we can't bring others to Christ because we're too busy trying to work on ourselves. Ourselves is a, is a kind of a bad word. Self. Selfish. And selfishness. We have to come humbly before God. That means we put all our self before the Lord. Amen. Amen. We got to quit in putting fear. We got to quit being emotional. We got to quit watching movies that are sensual. It contaminates our faith. The games have sensuality in it too. Do you know, I, sometimes I look at my kids and they'll throw in a commercial. I know Teresa has a way to protect them. But, you know, I was like, how do you do this? You know, and it looks all good and they'll throw in this commercial. There's now a, a, a cartoon that has uh, two men getting married. It's like, you got to guard your kids from that stuff because it's a seed on your eyes. It's a seed. So it contaminates your faith. You know, when you allow that in, in here, in your psyche, you have to try harder to stand in faith. But if you avoid it all, your faith just soars. That thing that has been stopping your breakthrough, it's like, man, I've, God blessed me with this, and now I have this stumbling block. <sighs> Something has to happen, Right? We can't delude our faith. Uh, there's also things that cause you to be dull in your hearing. Let's talk about idols in the house. Things that dull your hearing. You know, there's I, I, idolatry in the house can come in many, many, many different forms. Um, let's talk about uh, cleaning the atmosphere around you and filling it up with worship. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about say, family members that, that, that seep out little cuss words in your house. Say, no, I, 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 I'm sorry, we can't can have that. Come on now. Come on, you can talk better. There's ways of saying things because it creates an atmosphere. You know cuss words are curse words. They're cursing. You can't have sweet and bitter water coming out your mouth at the same time. Right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is all from the Holy Spirit, so uh, let, let the Lord uh, minister to you. Uh, I want to read Amplified. Um, in Amplified Romans 4.16, the A part. There's A part and B part. I want to emphasize the A part in the Amplified. It says, therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith. That is, confident trust in the unseen God. That's a portion I want to, to really emphasize. When you want the promise, it depends uh, entirely on faith that has a confident trust in the unseen God. See, believing in God, you don't see him with your naked eye, but you know there's a God. You don't see Jesus with your naked eye, but you know his presence is here. You feel him in the spirit. So you, well, that's part of faith. Did you know that? That's part of faith in itself. So when you want to inherit the promise, it depends entirely on faith our whole christianity is about faith so to inherit the promise you have to completely and entirely trust in him we had to we have a church testimony we didn't share it all with you because our level of faith is different than your level of faith but we were facing a sixty thousand uh, dollar down payment, $60,000 we needed. We had 
a little bit from all, all of the, um, the building fund givers, pledges, but we still needed $60,000 more. And so me and Pastor were very careful with our faith talk. And so we said two words. What are they? I believe, I receive, and I shall have it, and I'm not going to doubt. Lord, we call it in. Pray over that. You know, don't just say, I believe, I receive. There has to be substance to that of whatever scripture it is or whatever you're praying for, and call that in. I believe I received $60,000. Lord, angels, just bring it in from somewhere. Give us wisdom some way, somehow. Um, Dr. Powell says, you know, I really feel that from my proceeds that I want to sow it into the church. And I said, yay, so we need like $39,000 more, $38,000, $39,000, $38,000 more. And so we said, okay, Lord Jesus, hey, Lord Jesus. One day I was going to, to Brahms. I, I like to get bread and all that from Brahms. And I come back to the truck and Pastor is gone. I was like, where's Pastor at? He couldn't be walking anywhere. It's kind of drizzling out there. And I was like, it can only be one place, because there's a Brahms in a bank of Oklahoma right there. So he goes in the bank of Oklahoma, and he's sitting there, and he's in the office, and they said, hey, you got a lot of equity. Uh, we can give that to you. And we're like, just like that. And so I came in, signed the papers, and we're like, they came to inspect our house. And, I mean, it was so fast. We just, we got the 60000 <laughs> And it was right, was it that week of closing? Within a week of closing or a couple of weeks? Real close to the closing date. So we were in the 11th hour here. But we believe that we received and we had it. We had it. We have it. <laughs> it's in this building. It's in that contract. It's, you're, you're sitting in it. We got the building. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So these are the things that we have to be very careful to listen to the word of God. So it can get into your heart. And an, another part of, of getting the word into your heart is worship. Uh, worship is part of your faith stance. You have a stance of faith. I'm getting this. I believe I receive. You know, I'm going to tell every doubt, every, every lie that the devil tells me. Well, remember when you were young, you did this. Well, remember this sin that you did. You tell it to get out. You tell it to shut up and get out. Shut up and get out. So that's your faith stance. Bad words, shut up and get out. You know, it's like a boxing glove. You know, you have to guard your mind. One of the rules of boxing is to, to kind of hold it high because you don't want to get hit in the head. And so you have to guard your mind so that the word of God can take root in you and give you wisdom. You know, Lord, what is it? What is it? Could it be that, that, that I'm unfaithful? The, the biggest thing is unfaithfulness because we can be in church, but then we can be unfaithful to pray. We can be unfaithful to talk to God every day. We can be unfaithful to read the word every day. You know, it, it sounds like a bad word, unfaithful, but that's just like a disregard to our Heavenly Father. So he wants us to be faithful. Number one, rule that out. Am I unfaithful? And take care of that. Simple as that. Because that's, that's where, what would be lacking in your faith, number one. So worship and praise breaks the... Uh, worship and praise brings the anointing that breaks the yoke. You have to worship long enough to break the yoke. Even at home, not just here, but sing a song at home long enough to break the yoke, to you feel the presence of God. That's why I said it's so important not to be late because you hinder the gospel at work because even in praise has the gospel. You, you, you hinder yourself, and it, it also hinders uh, uh, the, the word of God because it's harder in the spirit to make a breakthrough because it takes, even in prayer, prayer before service, it takes a good 15 minutes to keep our mind from wandering. Ask anybody, they can say, well, I'm trying to break through, trying to break through, trying to break through. Same thing in worship. You're singing a song, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then when it gets deeper, you start getting deeper into the spirit. But if you come and it's over, it's over. And so you, you have to try harder because you can get many answers by singing the word of God. You can come in carrying yokes, but in the worship, the yokes just fall off of you. That's happened to me uh, many, many, many times. You know, the yokes try to get on me. I try to worry. Pastors, you know, have to fight worry because pastor wants to make sure you're doing okay. 
even you, your families. We want to make sure all your families are doing okay. We want to make sure this neighborhood is doing okay. We want to make sure your friends are doing okay in the Lord. They need to be won over. And so sometimes those yokes can get real heavy, and so we praise through it. We praise through it until we feel the anointing and we feel the burdens lifting. Praise feels the burdens lifting. Maybe that's lacking in your faith. Maybe worship at home is lacking in your faith. Uh, it brings an atmosphere. Uh, a unity of worship in the house makes it easy to flow in the spirit. It brings an atmosphere. You know, you, you bring, a, 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 say, at Whataburger, they had some old rock and roll in the days of the old 70s rock and roll, you know. Uh, it, the, a lot of the music was, had good words back then. <laughs> and, uh, and then before you know it, you're eating your hamburger and you're going, Da 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 You know, I like that. <laughs> what well, Pastor Christine likes that? You know, you know, and before you know it, you're tapping your, you know, why? Because it's the atmosphere in there. It's the atmosphere. That's the same way in your houses, in in your in your in your car, wherever you are. Praise brings an atmosphere. What kind of atmosphere? Maybe that's what's lacking in your faith. I got it together with everything else, but. My atmosphere is just not up to par. Hallelujah. So getting the word inside your heart to fight the battle until you get the answer. That is what today is about. Remember the two words, I believe, I receive. Don't contaminate your faith. When things come against your mind, tell it to shut up and get out. Amen? Amen. There are some scriptures that uh, I'm going to read very quickly. I want you to write these down. If you have a pen because you'll want to look them up in different versions. Deuteronomy 4.9. Deuteronomy 11.18. Numbers 15.39. 1 Corinthians 4.17. And Malachi 3.16. Talks about an attitude here. Okay. Deuteronomy 4.9. And I am going to read this in the Amplified. Only pay attention and watch yourself closely so that you do not forget the things which your eyes have seen and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your grandchildren, impressing these things on their mind and penetrating their heart with these truths. Deuteronomy 11:18 amplified these are all amplified therefore you shall impress these words of mine on your heart and on your soul and tie them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as bands or frontals or frontlets on your forehead see what i got here this is as close as i could think of as Something that I can tie on. If I had a bobby pin or pin, I could put this on my forehead. Have you noticed the Jewish pe people, certain Jewish uh, sects, S -E -C -T -S, they, they, they have the curly hair, and, they'll, and once in a while you'll see a little box. Box right there. It's the funniest thing, but it means something very special. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen them? The little box right here. And so there, let's see if it stays. And that is, there's a word of God in there, and that's to remind them constantly. So if I go and talk to you, you're probably not going to look at my clothes. You're going to be looking at, you're going to be looking at, in between my eyes, what's, what's that? You're looking at the word. You're looking at the word. Literally, they take it literally so they will not forget. It says, let's, let's look, continue on. Um, Numbers 15.39. It shall be a tassel. This is like a tassel. It shall be a tassel for you to look at and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So in there are the commandments of the Lord. Probably in Deuteronomy, the commandments are in there. The commandments of the Lord to do them. It's, let me read it again. It shall be a tassel for you to look at and remember all the commandments of the Lord. To do them so that you do not follow after the desires of your own heart and eyes and desires which you used to follow and play the prostitute. Ouch. He's a jealous God. He's a jealous God. And so this really blessed me. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a visual. I want them to just 
you know, you can't really see the rest of me or my earrings. You can sure see this, right? That's the way God is wanting to be literal, literal to you to, to get an example that what he means, he means what he says, he means it. Let's look at um, 1 Corinthians 4.17. It says, for this reason I have sent Timothy to you, who is my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, and he will remind you of my way of life in Christ. This is Paul. My conduct and my precepts for godly living, just as I teach everywhere in every church. So here he is saying that the conduct and precepts for godly living is being preached. Same here in this house. Our pastor preaches, and myself preaches, a good conduct and precept for godly living. And that's where we'll always teach that, everywhere we go. Everywhere we go. And so we, we want the word of God to get inside of us. We want it to be right here, right here in, in our forehead. You know, if you get hit right here, right with a hammer, I mean, don't you instantly die? There's something, there's something in here in the brain that just is a very important part there. Let's look at Malachi, Malachi 3.16, and this is amplified. It said, Then those who feared the Lord with all filled reverence spoke to one another, and the Lord paid attention and heard it. Notice it said, all filled reverence. What if there's a reverence and an honor in the house of God that, that causes us to lack faith? Maybe we need to rev it up some in our honor. You know, we, we honor the man of God. When the man of God texts, text, sends a text, we've got to immediately answer. He calls you. He immediately. That's a reverence, an attitude of reverence. Let's see. Uh, with all field reverence, they, those who feared the Lord with all field reverence spoke to one another, and the Lord paid attention and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before, before him of those who feared the Lord with an attitude of reverence and respect. And who esteem his name. When you respect and reverence a man of God, you're respecting God because he's a man of God. You esteem his name. When you esteem his name, you don't let anybody say his name in vain. You know, Jesus is not a, a, is not a, a vain name to be said. Jesus. Some people say, Jesus Christ. When you hear someone say, Jesus Christ, and you say, and his anointing that breaks a yoke. <laughs> Jesus Christ and his anointing. Burning and removing, yoke destroying, uh, uh, anointing. Hallelujah. It's <laughs> a way to change that around. <laughs> and so a book of remembrance is written for those that fear the Lord. So he is everything that you do that's of obedience. He is remembering that before you. He knows how you honor this house. He knows how you... Uh, I honor this pulpit by wearing a suit because I love the Lord. I started in the ministry by wearing a suit to honor God, and I will continue to do that. Hallelujah. And so we have these things here to work on in our life. Your faith depends entirely on the Word of God. So we have to be intent in our remembering. We're here to preach you, to preach to you, that whatever may be imperfect and lacking in your faith, to get it fixed. You know by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Don't forget those two words. Don't forget how to tell the devil to shut up and get out. And do some soul searching. Pull out those weeds. And worship God, truly. Pull out those weeds. Pull out those weeds. Pull out those weeds. We are going somewhere. Why? So that we can be a blessing to others. We, how can we reach someone with the word if we are not living 100% for the Lord? How can we reach that? Don't let that be a condemnation. Let it be a challenge. You live right, act right, and win them. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, if there's something that's, a, 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 that's been hindering you and bothering you, let's take it to the Lord. Let's take it to the Lord. Sora bayando kutare bayando. Iri alara baha soto loro bosaya. Salara bayando kishare bayando. Father God, what is lacking in our faith? What is lacking that causes me to be robbed by the devil? It causes me to go the wrong way instead of the right way. 
Father, we address those things and we command it to shut up and get out. Remove bad influences from our life. Remove them. Remove my own desires to want to do my own thing instead of being faithful in the house of the Lord. Remove the stronghold that causes us to remember the evil things done to us. Remove the bitternesses in our lives. Remove the guilt. You say, how, how can I? I have so much in my life that needs to be worked on. Don't worry about that. You put more word in you, yeah. and all that worry would just fade away. Thank you. you become a new creature, creation in Christ. Become new, brand new. Just like his mercy is new every morning. That's how great his faithfulness is. And we are faithful to him the way he is for us. We'd be walking in his mercy and his power and his love every day.